Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, everybody. Mike, you're good. If you'd like, you can, you can be dismissed. I know some of you are like, where's our announcements? Where's Heidi? Well, you got to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, amen? Brad, I'm a little hot. If you can tone me down a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome worship service, amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is just, just a beautiful, beautiful opportunity right now, I believe, just to hear from the Holy Spirit, just to continue in this attitude of, of worship. Amen? I want you to ask yourself a question first. Why are you here? You don't have to answer it out loud if you don't want, but I want you to, if you don't have an answer, I want you to ask yourself that question and say, all right, why did you get up from your comfy house, comb your hair, some of you, and come on out to church tonight? Why'd you come? Because you wanted to hear the, the awesome worship team? That's a good excuse. That's a good reason. You wanted to hear Pastor Aaron, and you realize he's not here when you get here? <laughs> Hallelujah. Ask yourself, I, I, made, I made all this effort to come tonight to invest an hour of my life. Why? And I want you to then, then compare it to the greatest desire, the greatest thing you're believing for in your life. And if those two aren't the same thing, then you're setting your stakes too low. If you just came to hear a good message or because you wanted to check church box off or, or just to worship the Lord, then, then you're, 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 setting your, your, um, you're setting your sights too low. I believe that the Holy Spirit is here available for every single one of us to change lives forever, to heal bodies, for lame to walk, for million dollar, multi-million dollar ideas to be dropped into hearts, for wisdom and understanding, direction and insight for every single person here. And I can just tell you right now, God is not holding back on any of us. Amen? Amen? He, the work he did, he said, is finished. Amen? How many of you, ever, maybe you work in the yard or maybe you had a, a long day at work or were at the house and you work all day and finally it's time to, to lay down, put your feet up, and then someone asks you to do something? I'm done. I'll save that to-do list to tomorrow. Well, there's no tomorrow for Jesus. He finished it all. It means it's all available for us. He has prepared a meal on the most beautiful table with the most beautiful silverware or goldware or to us, for us to just partake and to enjoy. Amen. Amen? What goes off in my heart while we were worshiping is in Matthew chapter 20, and Jesus is walking through this town. Where do you want me to start, Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's leaving Jericho. Let's go there. And it says, Two blind men were sitting by the road when they heard that Jesus was passing by. And they cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, Son of David. They recognized Jesus as Lord. Amen? You have to recognize him as Lord of your life as well. You have to see him as Lord. That means that whatever situation you're going through, it's smaller than him. They never met him personally. They never had an encounter with him before. But they recognize Jesus as Lord. And that's key. As you read through these parables, as you read through these, look how people address Jesus. How they address Jesus is what they really believe of him. Some call him teacher. Some call him friend. Some call him rabbi. But the ones who call him Lord are the ones that receive whatever it is they want. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say, then the multitude warned them, the blind men telling them to be quiet. But what did they do? They cried out even more. 
Hallelujah. The world is trying to silence the voice of the believer. It's trying to silence, to, to drown it out, because Satan knows the power in our words. He knows the power of our voice. But they cried out even louder. When, then, when someone tries to suppress the word, you just got to get a, a righteous boldness on the inside of you to say, no, I'm not letting that happen. No, this is the truth. And it's the truth that will set you free. Hallelujah. And it says, he said, they say again, have mercy on us, O Lord. Do you not think that Jesus knew, like, he's the son of man. Like, as he's walking through this town, and he has the greater one, the Lord speaking to him. He's not doing anything the Father didn't tell him to do. He's not saying anything the Father didn't tell him to say. I would reckon that he knew about these two blind men. Would, could you, would you maybe agree with me with that? But yet, he was on his way by them. Can you get a picture of this? You have come here to church, and I don't want any one of you leaving blind. And I'm not just talking about physically, but Satan's number one tool is to deceive us. Because if he can get us deceived, then we're deceived. Amen? And the deceiving thing about deception is you don't know you're deceived when you're deceived. But it takes the light of his word to shine on that dark place and say, man, I can't believe I thought that way before. I can't believe I, I, you know, I used to say those things. I can't believe I used to think that way. It said, when they cried out, O son, Lord, son of David, it said, so Jesus stood still. Oh, man. I mean, this is what our imagination is for. Just read this and just get a picture of, of that. Like, do you think he just started getting like this smirk? Like, man, these two guys' lives are about to get changed forever. He's like, yes, somebody is exercising faith, and that's what pleases me. Can you get a picture of how excited he's about to get? Maybe you have blessed somebody financially. How exciting is it? You know, the Lord says, hey, go bless them with some cash. I remember... I was new to all of this. This is probably 2004, maybe. I don't know the year exactly. And I'm in, I'm in Texas in the Believers Convention. And there's just this husband and wife I just see sitting over on the other side of the auditorium. And uh, the Lord just puts it on my heart and says, I want you to go bless them financially. I have no clue who they are. I've never even seen them before. And this was like day one, right? Starts on Monday. And uh, they're all the way on the other side of the auditorium, and it's like, like the service ended, and I didn't get a chance to do it. And like this, this anticipation is just building on the inside of me throughout the next day comes. I'm just looking for them. Where are they at? I can't wait. I, I, I took out as much cash as I could out of the ATM. I said, Lord, I wanna, you told me to do it. I want to bless them big. And I'm looking for them. I mean, my heart is beating. This, this is uh, me in the natural. Just imagine Jesus in this situation. These guys are blind. They can't see. How excited are they to give them their sight? And the next day, I don't, I don't see him the next day. And now it's like, man, I gotta, this money's burning a hole in my pocket. Like, this has got to go where the Lord has called it to go. And I end up running into him in the hallway. And Lord, remind me how it went down. And I came up to him and I said, I have no idea what this is for, but the Lord told me that he wanted me to bless you. And uh, he looked at me, super funny, and he's like, glory to God, I'll take it. And that was it. I was like, all right, what was that, Lord? Well, a couple days goes by, then all of a sudden, I think it was Kenneth Copeland, it may have been Jerry Seville, start talking about this gentleman that's been a partner with their ministry and just starts going over about the blessing that he's been and the, this blessing and he did this blessing for him and they've done this blessing for him and they've done this blessing for him. And he had the guy stand up and it was the same guy. I was like, I was hearing from you too, Lord. But I could it just, the Lord was just showing me the anticipation I had. Like my heart, I, I don't know why. I'm like, I was, I don't, know, I, don't, I don't want to call it nerves. I was just jacked with adrenaline. Like, I cannot wait to get this to them. 
Jesus, imagine how Jesus feels right now. You have made the decision to come to church, to get anything you want from him and his word. Anything you want. Dude, his heart's racing. His heart's beating. Come on. Just test me at my word. Just take me at my word. Just take me at my word. Just dream bigger. Just ask bigger. Just believe bigger. Get the fear out. Get the doubt out. I can do all things through me who strengthens you. Hallelujah. And look what happens. He calls to them and says, what do you want me to do for you? That's the question I believe he's asking each and one of us tonight. What is it? You came here for a reason, I hope. I'm not that good looking. My wife tells me I am, but I don't know. I'm still, still wondering if she's telling the truth. Right? You came here for a reason. Jesus is asking you the same question. What do you want me to do for you? It's in red. Jesus said it, not me. What is it? Will you take him for it? Will you ask him for it? Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that this may not be a typical Thursday night service. I'm believing every single person here, by the sound of my voice and those even watching online, have a life-changing experience with you tonight, Lord. Sometimes it's just saying, duh, I just got to trust you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we are fully persuaded, Lord. We are fully persuaded. The Bible talks about Abraham, and it says Abraham was fully persuaded. That means there was no changing his mind. He was fully convinced. So, Lord, we attack any area of doubt in our life right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We get the doubt out. Wherever there is, ever there's a little bit of doubt, you know, you can, you can recognize where doubt is where there's pressure or where there's fear or where there's anxiety or where there's unrest. Lord, I thank you. You give your beloved sweet sleep. I thank you, Lord, that tonight your word promises us that we can know your will and that when we know your will, we can have your will. And I thank you, Jesus. Your will is for all of us to be delivered, to be set free, to have a life, to enjoy our life, to have it in abundance to the full till it overflows, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. You are no respecter of persons. It doesn't, mind if, it doesn't matter if we were blind, Lord. Your word can make us see. And we expose Satan right now in the name of Jesus and all of his lies. And I thank you, Lord, that every single one of us, Lord, leave here tonight changed by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you in agreement with me? Yes. You know, it's not up to me how this all goes tonight. You have just as big a part, actually bigger part than I have in how this goes because you guys are the hearers. You guys can pull it out, whatever it is. It's like I'm just here as a vessel for the Holy Spirit to work through me, and your faith can be like, all right, this is what I need, Lord. I need an answer. I, can't, I, I, I feel bad sometimes because I come to church here throughout the years, and I, I have a, conversa a strict conversation with the Lord, like, Lord, I need an answer for this tonight. There's times I have to apologize to the pastor. I'm like, I apologize, man. I messed up your whole message. I know, you had, I know you had plans, but I needed some help. So I apologize that I had to take you off script. I apologize that you had to talk about that because it was exactly what I needed, and I appreciate it. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you for being a vessel for me because I got my answer, and I know when you get the truth, the truth's what makes you free. Amen? I mean, the woman with the issue of blood, she just heard about Jesus. She didn't have all the teaching tapes we have I mean, we are so blessed. Like, if there's anything bothering you at night before you go to sleep, 
you have real-time access to the answer, even if you don't feel like opening your book, to just get on westcoastword.com, get on Keith Moore's site, get on Jerry Seville, and say, I'm going through X, and pull up the word where that's concerned. Sunday evening, my daughter wasn't feeling good. Um, her, she, she, she got a fever, and that fever spiked to like 103 degrees. And uh, I, came, so I came home from church, and uh, I said, all right, we're going to deal with this thing. And we're gonna, I'm going I'm to teach you what the word says about it. I'm going to lay my hands on you, and then we're going to put the word on. And uh, she had healing scriptures playing in the background, and uh, I said, I said this, this time... As this, it was about an hour long uh, healing scriptures, uh, I totally recommend it. It may be hard for you to find, but just email me and I'll get it to you because I got it in a format that's super easy. Um, Larry Hutton, I don't, know if, I don't know if you've ever heard of Larry Hutton. This, he's out of Broken Arrow, um, Oklahoma, just an awesome man of God, cool man of God. I'm surprised he's still friends with us after some of the tricks we played on him. The first time he ever came to West Coast Word Church, the minister, uh, we heard that he was a health nut. Like, a, like, I'm talking about strict health nut, like no sugar diet health nut, right? So, you know, we've got a pastor that likes to play jokes, right? So we set up his hotel room with like some beautiful flowers and like a list of things that we know he likes. And uh, we put a box of Twinkies. But we emptied out all the Twinkies. And he got to his hotel room and uh, he sees this box of Twinkies, and he's like, I haven't had a Twinkie in like 10 years. He goes, all of a sudden, the like, spirit of Twinkie came on him, and he, oh, he grabs the box, and there's nothing in it. And he's like, all right, they had to have hit him somewhere. He said he tore that, uh, that hotel room apart looking for those Twinkies. We didn't need, we, I, we, I'm like, well, we didn't want to leave them there for you. <laughs> and he's like, why did you do that to me? So he's got a, uh, he's got a, a, it was a tape back then, a CD called, um, Heal- I don't know what it's called, Healing Scripture, something to piano, and he just, all he does is he finds every healing scripture in the Bible, and he reads it in like three to five translations. That's all it is. It's a beautiful piano in the background, and he's just reading the word where healing is concerned. Yeah. I, told, I told my daughter, I said, listen, I want, I don't want this just, just don't let this play in the background. I said, I want you to concentrate on what he is saying and put yourself as the person that they're talking about. And uh, I believe she did it. I don't know if she did, but I came back in 30 minutes later, checked her temperature, and it was under 100 degrees. I was happy about that. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So this woman with an issue of blood, she just heard about Jesus, but she said something out of her mouth before she left the house. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. I know I will be made whole, right? And she, you've heard this pastor's ministered on it. I've ministered on it. She goes all the way there. She pushes through the crowd. Um, she grabs the hem of his garment and Jesus stops and says, who touched me? And his disciples look at him like he's crazy. Like, what do you mean, dude? This guy, you're getting pushed around all over the place. It's so hard for me to keep these people off you. What do you mean who touched you? He goes, no, somebody touched me. Virtues flew, has flown, has, has flowed from me. And he looked at her and she, was, she was, didn't know what she was like. Am I in trouble? I'm not supposed to be out. I just know I feel something changed. And he looked at her and said, Daughter, your faith has given you what you've been looking for. Your faith, not my faith. He said, what, Your faith to get out and come do what you said you were going to do is the reason why you received what you, what you received tonight. And that's the same thing for us. It is up to you tonight what you take home. It's a buffet. You can have whatever you want, free, paid for. It's up to you. You can leave with just coffee, you can leave with dessert, or you can leave full. I like leaving full. Not too full. We fall asleep driving home. You, you can pull over too. It's all right. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, Lord. We're here for you. We're here with you to learn with you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you about the will of God tonight. And I started on Sunday, if you were here on Sunday, talking to you about the number one thing we need to do, the very first thing we need to do to receive anything from the Lord. And I asked, what do you think it is? And people said, you got to pray, you got to believe, you got to ask. And all those are good. And those all have their place but they're not the very first thing we need to do in order to receive anything from the Lord. In Matthew, it talks about how when we pray, Jesus said, you got to pray like this. O Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done as it is in heaven. Then it says, give us this day our daily bread. That that give us today is us asking Jesus to give us something, Right? So there's something that comes before that. When, when you ask him for something, there was something he said that happens before you ask. And it is his will has to be done. So if we want his will to be done in our life, we have to know what his will is for our life. Amen? So, thank you, Jesus. Do, you, do, do any of you maybe have friends, family members that maybe are caught up in sin? Maybe some form of pornography, alcoholism, addiction, something like that. And you just have such a heart for them to be set free that maybe any time you're around them, you just want to like shake them like, come on, don't you know how much Jesus loves you? Don't you know you should be set free? Don't you know the life you should have? How's that working out? not working out too good, I bet. Right? That's not, this is something the Lord has been showing me, that's not how people get delivered. That's not how people get set free. You're not going to convince them if they're being deceived like they are and they're in in a battle, a stronghold with Satan and something in their life where addiction is concerned. You going and shaking them and telling them they're doing wrong, that's not going to, that's not going to help them. And I know you can be like, but they're, but they're on their way off a cliff and I, I got to stop them. No, you don't. But uh, it's just not right. It's messed up, and they shouldn't be doing it. I know. It's so frustrating. You just want to just grab them. I hear you. But it's not the answer. You want to know what the answer is? First of all, you do that, they're just not going to want to hang around with you. And you're the only one that probably knows the truth that they need. So you need them hanging around you. You want them hanging around you. You don't want them ticked off at you or afraid to hang out with you because they just know they're just going to get scolded every time you see them. What's going to set them free is when they truly know the will of God for their life. Because when they know the will of God for their life, they will know how much Jesus loves them. And when you know how much he loves you and the plan he has, then they'll be willing to give up those other things in order to please him. Because they know, wow, Lord, you have that plan for me. When you truly know... His will is that you're blessed physically, mentally, socially, that he wants you taken care of, complete, shalom, with nothing missing or nothing broken. It's a a hunger will, will burn on the inside of them, like, I want that for my life. They have to be willing to trade the life they've chosen for the life Jesus has laid up. Amen? So our job is to pray for them. Our job is to encourage them. Our job is to show them the word. Our job is to to encourage them on how the the will of God has worked in our life and and just minister to them on, this is what's happening in my life. Look what the Lord's done here. Look what the Lord's done for me. Look what the word says. That's all good. But beating them up, trying to get them to change, it's not going to work out for us. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, and let's go, Mark chapter 10, verse 27 I just want to establish a couple things here. I'm not going to keep you too long because I believe we're going to get what we came to get. Thank you, Jesus. This is Jesus talking. It says, but Jesus said, looking at them, it's important to to pay attention to what Jesus says. Amen. Amen? He says, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen? Mark chapter 9, verse 23 says, And Jesus said to him, again, Jesus said, If you can believe, 
All things are possible to him who believes. So we should be pretty big on believing, amen? It's, it's really not complicated. You know, there's times I've had people come up to me, and this is all glory to God. They're like, man, I just want, I just want, and they're saying it, I think, some part of it sarcastically. I just want the faith you have. I'm like, listen, don't, you don't, don't set your, your sights that low. You can go even higher. But it's just, it may sound like the confidence that I have isn't because of anything that I've done. Because there's many people in here that has known me since I was practically born and throughout my life, kindergarten, middle school, high school, you know how stupid I can be and the decisions I've made. And it's the, 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 the blessing on my life has nothing to do with me personally. It has nothing to do with my intellect. It has nothing to do with the gifts God's given me. It's 100%. I just got into his word and I found out the will of God for my life. And you know what I did? I believed it. That's it. And listen, if you're saying you have faith for something but you don't have it, you need to ask yourself, do I really believe what I'm saying? And that's a simple just self-check that I, I'll do on a regular basis. If the word says that all things are possible to those who believe, all right, then I'm just going to believe it. I start to get, you'll get to the point where things, instead of things keeping you up at night, you get excited because you've completely casted that care over onto him, and now you start thinking of creative ways on how the Lord's going to do it. And they may be all wrong, but it's so fun. Like, oh, man. I mean, people say things like, oh, it's too far gone. I heard today someone say, the train's already left the station. When some people say things like that, ah, man, you don't know what happens. I, it's like a righteous indignation just goes off on the inside of me. Like, oh, I can't wait for my God to prove you wrong. I just can't wait because it's obviously not going to be me. And I just start getting excited. Like, how are you going to do it, Lord? Can you show me? Just show me. Show me how you're going to do it. Are you going to make a donkey talk? You know, like, are you going to blind them? Can you blind them? That would be so cool. Just blind them for a little bit and then give them a sight back. Just, just freak them out really bad. Like, I start, these are, I know I might be a little weird, but these are the things I start thinking. Like, oh, man, what are you going to do, Lord? Are you going to make an axe head float? What are you going to do? Are you going to turn fish into a whole meal? Are you going to just make something show up? Are you just going to make the skies open? You know, I just start getting creative on all the things, the ways God can do it because at the end of the day, whatever we believe, he will do. Amen? Praise God. And you should not get frustrated if the people that are telling you it's impossible is impossible because it tells you right here that with men, it is impossible. So when they tell you, hey, it's not possible. Hey, the, the train's already left. It's too far gone. It's incurable. There's nothing else we can do. Yes, I'll get an agreement with that. Yes, there is nothing else you can do. I will get an agreement with that. But that doesn't mean that it's done. That doesn't mean the outcome is going to be what you say it's going to be. Amen? Because I'm going to believe his word, praise God. And you have the choice to get angry. You have the choice to get frustrated. You have the choice to get in fear. But at the end of the day, it won't be God's fault that it didn't happen. Amen? And that's good to know. I would rather know. Tell me now so I know that it's not God's fault. Because that means I have something to do with it, and I'm a believer. Are you a believer? Yes. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. That's important. That's why it's so important that, we be, that we, when we ask Jesus to come in our heart, we confess with our mouth, and we believe in our heart. That's important, amen? You have to believe it. How many people can come up to you and tell you, that you're not saved. How many of you would believe that? Why? Getting born again is way far more far out than being debt free. In my opinion. Like, what do you believe that somebody came here 2,000 years ago that you never saw and that died and then he rose again? And then he showed up and he walked through walls and he showed disciples like holes in his hands and his side. And then this Holy Spirit thing came and there's like fire over people's heads and people started talking all crazy. You guys believe that, right? But I tell you, hey, 
you should be debt free. And you, some of you look at me like I'm crazy. Well, I should look at you. You believe in speaking in tongues. I could think you're that crazy too. Right? We choose these things to believe. Some things are easier to believe than others. Well, that's the only reason why I may be debt free and you're not is because it was easy for me to believe. It's that simple. It takes a really, really good theologian sometimes to, to, confuse, to confuse the word. Amen? Just believe it. Simple. And then you are the only one that really knows in your heart if you believe it or not. And you can just go home and say, all right, Lord, show me. Put your finger on anything in my life that is filled with unbelief. I want to believe all of you, Jesus. If there's an area of unbelief in my life, just show me. Shine a light on it. So it can, I can expose it and I can attack it. And then when he shows you that area, you just get in his word and you say, ah, what does the word say about that? We've got a whole wall of, of scriptures for every, anything you can think of. Filled. You can just get in there and just start reading. Wow, your word says this. Your word says that. And that, belief, that unbelief starts changing into belief. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have a responsibility to find out what the will of God is in our life. It's our responsibility. It's not Pastor Aaron's responsibility. It's not Pastor Leslie's. It's not Pastor Mike's. Amen? It is our responsibility to find out in his word what the will of God is. I can tell you what it is, but there's a difference of hearing something and then knowing something. Because if you know it, you're not going to be easily persuaded against it. But if you just heard it, you can hear things, have one opinion, the next day hear something else, and your opinion can change. Then you hear something else, and your opinion changes again. And then you hear something else, and then you start telling someone your opinion, and then you run into them three months later, and you're telling them a different opinion, and they're like, I thought your opinion was this, and now your opinion's that. Well, yeah, because I read this, or I saw that. No, it's different with the word. When you get it in your heart, when you know that you know, then whatever t whoever tells you, whatever doctor, whatever Anybody tells you that's contrary to this, you can recognize, no, 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 that's not, that's not what the Word says. Because he's given us this book, which is from Jesus. And he's given us the author to live inside of us, to help us. And he's given us anointed teachers, like our pastors, to teach us through the Word. Really, we really have no excuse, praise God. Hallelujah. We should not, you're not, this is what the Lord is showing me, you are not ready to pray and you're not ready to act until you know what the will of God is. Some of us are so quick to just pray. No, don't be quick to pray. Get the will of God first before you start to pray. You get a report from the Lord uh, or someone calls you with some news. All right, let's pray. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's get what the will of God is first. Amen? I'm going to tell you why. I mean, even there's, this is something the Lord showed me. He said, before you, even maybe, maybe some of you have Jericho marches. Do you ever have those? Maybe not? No? Some of you are crazy? The Lord reminded me when I was studying, I started cracking up. My sister's here. She'll, I know she'll get a kick out of this. After, at dinner time in our house growing up, after dinner, <laughs> we all had to pick a song to sing. All right? This is the household I grew up in, and I love it. And it had to be a Christian song, right? And I, there's this one song my brother Tim used to pick. And he is, I'm not going to sing it for you, but it goes something like, I will never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. Anyone else heard this? Show of hands if you've heard this, all right? I will never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yes, sir. We didn't, it, it wasn't okay for us just to sing it, though. We had to march. Around the table. And I just, the Lord was just showing me like Jericho marches, and I just got this picture of marching around the table, shooting artillery, flying over the enemy. And it's just a picture of like, I'm like, Lord, thank you so much. I thought it was the stupidest, silliest, ridiculous thing. Like, I, and it wasn't like when I was just eight, it was like when I was like 16. All right? I'm just, this is so stupid. Why am I doing this? And I look back, I'm like, man, Lord, I thank you for that. That was such a blessing. I, I'm just going to make my kids do it from now till I, just to crack up, like, for them to think that I, you know, I think that we, not, there's, 
It's just a beautiful thing. Just, to, just, it just those things just stick with you. Amen? But we shouldn't do any of that until we know what the will of God is for our life. We got to get in and find out what the will of God is. It would save so much egg on your face. You start jumping out by faith and start doing something or start doing this over here and doing that, and you haven't got what the will of God is for your life yet, it'll save, it'll save so much egg. Look what it says in Ephesians 5, 17. In the Young's literal, it says, because of this, become not fools, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Means you can get you can look like a fool if you start stepping out and doing some things that's not the will of the Lord. Amen? I don't like to look foolish, amen. Ephesians 5:17 in the Amplified says, Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Amen? That means we should if the word tells us to do it, what does that mean? You can do it. Not just, that should be encouraging because there's still people here that may be listening online or here that are saying, I don't, I don't know if I really believe, Jeff, that you can actually know the will of God. Like some people think that God's ways are so much higher than their ways and that his thoughts are so much higher than their thoughts. He's not referring to the believer when he's talking about that. He's talking about the unbelief. The, the, the answers are actually not hidden from us. They're hidden for us. Amen? His ways aren't higher. He wants us to know the length, the depth, the breadth of his entire existence, his being. He wants us to know it. We should know it. If you don't know it, you should be concerned. Amen? If he's telling us to understand and grasp it fir firmly, that means we can understand and grasp the will of the Lord firmly for our life. We can know it without a shadow of a doubt. And when you know that you know that you're doing what he's called you to do, that's one of the most liberating places you can be. And it may not be the most glorious place. It may not be the most elegant place. But it's the most enjoyable place. Amen. When you know that you're doing what the Lord... That's how some people can... I met, I met a husband and wife that have spent the last 35 years of their life overseas building schools and homes and things like that. This year was the first year in 35 years that they spent Christmas in the United States. But you, you it, was, it has been the most enjoyable, fulfilling 35 years of their life. You talk with, with Dan and Marta, they do things, I'm like, man, that does not sound fun at all. <laughs> like, man, really? But it is the most, when you're doing the will of God, it is so fulfilling. It is so enjoyable. It is not work at all. It's not toil. It's like, man, I get to do this? Amen? We're building a house, and when you build a house, there are tens of thousands of decisions you have to make. Amen. You have to choose everything. And some people will say, you have to choose 30,000 different things? And I, I say, I get to pick every little stinking thing. There's a difference, right? Like, you have to make all those decisions. Like, oh, I don't mind being involved in every little nook. I get, that means when I, 10 years from now, five years, whatever the Lord, I can go and look and say, oh, man, look at the, that, that piece of baseboard right there. I picked that size, and I wanted that height because it looks a lot better than three inches smaller. Like, that looks, I could look at my baseboard and just say, oh, Lord, bless the Lord. You can, and that's just a silly example, but you can either look and say, I, I have to do this, or you get to do this. You mean I have to go to church on Sundays? No, you get to go to church on Sundays. I have to tithe? If, you ha if you're asking that question, I have to tithe, do not tithe. You get to tithe. That is awesome. You know what that means? That means that the windows of heaven are open unto me, and that a blessing is poured out that I can't even contain? And on top of that, that you're going to rebuke the devourer for my sake? And that I won't cast my fruit before it's time? Sign me up. I, I want some of that. Amen? I mean, the Lord just reminded me just the, the goodness of God when you give, it's like so fun. I was, I was, the Lord reminded me, my son Colson, he was, he was five years old. 
We were on our way to Disney, and uh, we stopped at a Chick-fil-A, and um, his sweet little voice at five says, hey, Dad, we should um, pay for the people's meal behind us, in the car behind us. And I thought he said pray, like he's got, he's got like this accent, it's, I don't know where it came from, it's super cute. And I'm like, oh, you want to pray for him? He's like, no, we all want to pay for them. I'm like, oh, okay. And uh, so we paid for them, I, think, I remember it was like six bucks, right? And we drive up to the park, and we didn't have passes or anything like this at that time. We pull up to the gate, and uh, the lady, as soon as we go to pay, she goes, you know what? It's on me today. It was $22 for parking. I remember, 22 bucks. I'm like, glory to God, we've already tripled our money, almost tripled, 2.8 times. We go to the park, we have a beautiful time. We brought my niece with us. Actually, we did have passes, I'm sorry. We had, we had annual passes, and uh, we went to the park, and uh, I bought a ticket for her, but it wasn't like those park copper passes. Uh, so they wanted to go see the lights at Hollywood Studios, so we got in a tram, and we went to Hollywood Studios, and uh, when I got there, it was late at night, it was, one of the, it was the last night they were doing like the lights that the way they were doing it. So this place is packed. And I'm like, oh, when I get there, I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to go upgrade her ticket, and the line was like crazy long, and uh, I told Roxanne and I, we got, I'm like, we got in line to go into the park like we had a ticket. And we're waiting in line to go through the gates, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, why are we in this line? Like, we, I have to get in that line over there to buy her ticket. And we're just sitting there and we're talking about it. And I'm like, oh, tell Roxanne, I'm like, oh, we got to go and sit in that line over there. I'm like, oh, man, I really don't want to go sit in that line. And we're just sitting there moving forward. And we get all the way to the turnstile. And the lady in front of us goes, did I hear you say something about a ticket? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like do you know if they have like a spot inside where I could maybe go in and buy so I don't have to go back around there? She goes, who's it for? I'm like, my niece. She goes, she's with me. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, she's with me. I work here. And she goes to the turnstile. She flashes her badge, but she gets one free guest. She goes, she's my guest. And we walk in. I'm like, that's 60 bucks. I'm like, Colson, let's keep this up, man. Who else can we buy food for? There's Starbucks. Let's buy some Starbucks. Let's buy some dinner. And it was just one thing after another thing and another thing after another thing. Like the whole day, it's just once we got the free parking, we started to say, let's see how many times the Lord blesses us today. And we just kept keeping track. Look how the Lord did this. We started paying attention to this little thing, this little thing. It was one of the most enjoyable days we've had. And that was, you know, five years ago. I'm still, we still remember it. Amen? Amen? You can see, you get the Lord involved, and you start, your whole life just starts. You start recognizing a whole different life. You can go to those parks around Christmas time and be completely miserable. Or you can go and it's like you're the only one there when the favor of God's on your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. The, in 1 John 5, 14, we'll close here. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. In who? Yeah. Who's that? Yeah. That's me. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You don't need to twist his arm if you're asking him, for something according to his will. And you don't have to wonder if he's hearing your prayers because it tells you right here. You can have confidence in him that if you ask anything according to his will, he will hear you. Amen? That's another important point. You got to know his will because when you know his will and you pray his will, you know he hears you. And then look what it says in verse 15. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever, does that include anything? Is there anything excluded from whatsoever? Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what a petition is? It's a formal written request typically one signed by many people, appealing to authority with respect to a particular cause. That sounds fancy. It's a formal written request, typically signed by one or more people. This is why, how many of you by show of hand, you can raise your hand, have heard of a prayer petition? All right. 
not half of us. I want to encourage you, your homework is to go home and Google Jerry Seville prayer petition in YouTube. He'll do a wonderful job teaching you. A petition is a formal written request. So one of the things that, that we do in our household is when there's something big we're believing for, we make it a formal request in writing. And we base it on the will of God. Jake and I have done this in our business multiple times. We're believing for debt freedom or whatever it is to pay something off. We, write, we make a petition. We write it out. We do a formal request to the Lord in writing. And then we both sign it. We date it and we thank the Lord for it to be done for us. And in that request, we don't just say, Lord, uh, just pay off our debt in Jesus' name. No, we write down his will for us. We say, Lord, your word says that we should be the lender and not the borrower. You're here, write this verse down. Colossians 1, 9 through 11. I'm going to give you answers to the test. Joe, you're welcome to come up or whoever's closing out. Here's a petition you can write. Colossians 1, chapter 9. I mean, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. I write this. I say, I thank you, Jesus, that I, Jeff, am filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom, in all spiritual understanding, and that I might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, that I, Jeff, am strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. That's a good promise. You put that in writing and then you add things that you're looking for, man, you keep that in front of your eyes on a regular basis, what it's going to do, it's, it's going to do what Romans 12, 2 says. It's gonna, you're going to start renewing your mind. See, you've been, trans, you're, you've been, this world has trained the way you think. I think about advertising in like the 50s and the 60s, and man, people were gullible, and advertising companies knew it. These, those shows like Mad Men and things like that that show you advertising, they weren't geniuses. It was people were gullible. They knew if they could just put an ad out and paint a picture of a certain thing that people would just say, oh, I want that, and go get That's what advertising does. It paints a picture of something that's trying to get you to desire it. Well, the Word will do the same thing. It'll paint a picture of your heart of what Jesus has done for us. And as our minds start getting renewed to that thing, it, it totally transforms us from the way that the world thinks. And it puts us in a position to receive what God has for us. Amen? Are you going to go home? Look up what the will of God is for your life. Is it going to be the first thing we do now instead of prayer, instead of stepping out, instead of doing anything? Open his word. All right, Lord, what's the will of God for my life? What is it, Lord? What is it that you have for me? You can stand to your feet. Praise God. Prayer couples, if you can come forward. Thank you, Jesus. If you're struggling in any area of your life, I just want to encourage you that there is an answer in his word for you tonight. Just close your eyes. Whatever it is you've been struggling with, whatever it is you've been battling, whatever it is you've been facing, just put your heart on how much Jesus loves you, regardless of any decision you've ever made, regardless of any mistake you've made. He loves you so much. He you can't change the love that he has for you. His will is for you to have life and to enjoy it, to have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As soon as you recognize that he loves you, that the will of God is for you to be blessed going in, going out, it's easy to say, you know what, I don't want to deal with this junk anymore. I, I want what you have for me, Lord. Your way is so much better than mine. I thank you, Lord, 
It's the knowledge of the truth that sets us free. I can sit up here and tell you the truth all day long, but until you have the knowledge of that truth for you, that's when freedom comes. And when freedom comes, freedom stays. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Lord, and I thank you every single person here, Lord, that they're not just hearers of the word, Lord, they're doers of the word, that they've been encouraged tonight to get in your word, to find the will of God for them, Lord. And I thank you just like you've done it for me, my family, Lord, you'll do it for them. Even greater, Lord, I pray that the blessing of God is on their life, that they'll look back and say, man, that one Thursday night, man, things just started changing. The blessing of God just started chasing me down. It's starting to overtake me. I'm losing track of all the blessings. I can't even keep up with the testimonies. I thank you, Lord. You are faithful. That we've been called into partnership with your son, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Your word says you are reliable. You are ever true to your promise. And you can be depended on, Lord. And I thank you. You will never cause the uncompromisingly righteous to slip, fall, or fail. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you need prayer in any area of your life, please let us join our faith with you. Hallelujah. We want to believe God with you. Amen. All right. You know the blessing, right? You're above. You're, what is it? How does it start? You're blessed going in. You're blessed going. No, that's not how it starts. How's it start? You're the head and not the tail. See, I got to remember that. Head is always top. You're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed going in. You're blessed going out. You're the lender, not the borrower. You're good looking. You're dismissed. Everything you set your hands to. Man, it's only been 18 years. So you think I'm going to get it by now, right? Love you guys. See you Sunday. Thank you, Jesus.